Today on the Woodwork Experience, we're talking about research of materials. Now, it's very important that when you do your research, you actually research at least five to six products, five to six different materials that are relevant to your project. There's no point researching, say, Merbau, if you're gonna be doing an interior coffee table, unless, of course, you are choosing to select it for its aesthetic qualities. Now, when you're going through this, it's also very important to include other materials that aren't necessarily straight up timbers, such as MDF, plywood, particle board. Why? Well, because in some aspects, they might be appropriate. For example, plywood, if you're doing a drawer, plywood is a very common drawer base. So of course you need to have plywood researched. If you're making a pool table and you're not gonna use a slate top, well, MDF would be a great second option. However, MDF does have some safety concerns, so make sure to research thoroughly. Anyway, let's get straight into it over at the computer. Welcome back to the Woodwork Experience workstation, and from here we're gonna go crack open that folio folder. Open up that template, go file, save a copy, and of course, we are working on our research of materials, so it's gonna be 05, and then research of materials. Save that then. After you do that, you're gonna come up to that heading and change that to research of materials. Following that, the next step is you're gonna go insert, because we're gonna add a table, to table, you go five across, two down, insert. We're then gonna go click back up on the home button, because we're gonna select that table, all the rows there, I'm gonna change that from, we're gonna leave that as Calibri body, but we're gonna change that to size 12. We're gonna make sure it's black as well. After we've completed that, we need to add in the following headings across the top. Now, I'm gonna copy and paste them from another document to save some time, but I recommend that you pause this video and uh, copy them in or get them in as you can. After you've got them in there, I really like to have them centered. So I centered that by just going Control E or pressing that button up there. So make sure to pause it, get the headings down, and then continue on with the video. From here, we do need to go through and set up some more information down in this area here. Now, once again, to save time, I have already got it in another document, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it from that document. But take your time, once again, to fill the information out as required. So each of these headings has then another heading underneath. And what you're wanting it to look like towards the end is gonna be something like this. So ultimately, as you can see here, when I've said image of material, I've gone and picked an image of the material. Now, I've also made sure that this image is, I try to get it squarish to fill the majority of this. So if it's too large, you can need to crop it. So you go right click, you can go crop, um, and then you can actually bring it in to select the grain that you want. If you press yes there, then you could obviously come back out and re-expand that. For color and grain, so tell me, like, is it a straight grain? Is there a lot of curls in the grain? That's all we need to know here. Common uses, come through and just list them. Now you could do dot points, but I find dot points in tables gets a little bit overwhelming. And so I find that just listing them with capital letters for each point is the way to go. The ease of use literally talks about how easy a product is to use. For example, Tasmanian oak might be very suitable for your project, but its ease of, ease of use is kind of a pain mostly because when you're using it, it tears out a lot with all the saws and the cutting. And even sometimes when you're sanding, it'll, you can just lift some of the grain, it'll tear a piece out. And so it's ease of use is not overly easy, even though it's a great aesthetically pleasing product to use. It's gluing. So this is where if you're using a lighter timber, you'd wanna use Type Bond 1. If you're using a darker timber, you might use Type Bond Dark or even Type Bond 3, just because they dry a darker color. Or you may dye your glue to get the color that you are after. Finishings, are there any finishings that look really good on the product or don't look good? For example, pine accepts all finishes, but stains absorb at different rates. And so it should be avoided because you'll get splotchiness with stains. Now with the pricing here, a lot of students go through and they always screw up and they add different pricings so they're not relevant. So they might use 140 by 19 for pine. They might use 70 by 19 for merbau. All that. And then in some students use cubic meters. We never buy timber in cubic meters. So make sure that they're all 140 by 19 by one meter. Now you don't have to quote the prices from all the different places you can get it. Um, for example, for this one, I just went straight to Bunnings. However, if you are looking at ordering your timber from 
say Armour Timber, you use the prices that you're planning on ordering from. So you get all the prices for one company. For delivery, tell me, can you get it locally? You know, are you able to access it in your local area? If not, do you have to order it from another area? Because if you were to order it from another area, it does impact whether you use that material. Positives, negatives, generally pretty simple. When we're talking about suitability, it is very much like, is it suitable for your project? And if not, why? If so, why? Potential uses. Where could you use it on your project? After you've gone through and created your table, the next thing you need to do is copy and paste that table another six times. And so what it's gonna end up looking like is this. After that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the ongoing evaluation. Now for this section, it's gonna take up a little bit of space, which is why we left half a page. You're gonna have the heading ongoing evaluation. As you can see, it's bolded there. Then you're gonna come down and unbold the text and you're gonna write something along the lines of, after completing my research, I have determined that my material for the tabletop of my project will require the following qualities. Now this is where you could mention it needs to be of a brown aesthetic with minimal grain showing. It needs to be strong so that it can hold people's weight. It needs to be dense so it won't dent easily. It needs to have an ease of use so it's not going to be chipping out. It needs to be available in my area and needs to be under the price of this much per metre. And after you've made a statement on that, now I would definitely write it in a paragraph form because if you have this, it's going to take up so much space. After that, there's another comment down here that says materials that are still being considered at this point in time include, and then let's say you wanted a brown timber. So you might say Merbau, American Walnut, Tasmanian Blackwood, if you've researched them in your research up above. Now, what you need to do is repeat the above statement for each part of your project, which means you're going to do it for your tabletop. You'll do it for the drawers. You'll do it for the draw base. You'll do it for the legs. You'll do it for the aprons. Good luck. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of the Woodwork Experience.